Friday, May 27th. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Brian and I grow here in Southern California in the Los Angeles area. Today we're going to be out here taking a garden tour. We recently uploaded a video where we looked at most of this growing space. Today I'm going to show you the other growing spaces that we have. And as we go on this tour, I want uh, to highlight some of the things that we practice, which is succession growing and also that we grow for fresh food that we use in the kitchen. We're not storing it in the fridge. So we grow small amounts of things and also we grow for variety. So let me take you back here where we have potatoes growing and potatoes are one of the succession crops that we grow. This is Magic Molly and we have some that are soon ready to harvest harvested. Uh, let's see if we can see some by pulling this up or otherwise we have to dig them out. So yeah, we'll have to dig them out. So we have some mo magic mollies in here. We also have some brown onions uh, that are here. And we have over here a small cabbage. This growing area is newer, so the soil is not as developed, so the plants aren't going to be as big. Over here we have a row of, this is strawberry popcorn. And then we have some Jacob's cattle bean right behind the strawberry popcorn. We have this lath wire to keep this bed protected from skunks that might otherwise disturb the soil and dig out our plants. Once the plants establish a little bit more, they're safe from the skunks digging them out. Uh, as we go along this way, we have a, a banana plant that's here and it's uh, produced some bananas and we're waiting for it to turn yellow before we harvest them. These are the, the ice cream banana. And we have another row of planting of corn here. So the other thing that you will see today is uh, different varieties of corn. And we have to make sure we time it correctly. Otherwise, with cross-pollination, you're going to get corn that is not going to taste as they were intended to taste by the seed characteristics. Some more tomatoes over there. You may notice landscape flats. These are great for protecting our beds for, uh, from birds that might dig out the seeds. And recently I figured out that we can uh, lean it flat against some tomato plants to keep them, to prop them up. So that's what we have over there. Um, down over here we have some long yard beans. And then in the middle there are some sugar baby watermelon plants. These yard long beans will grow on these poles. These poles are great for gardening. They're pretty economical when we get them from Daiso and they, they don't take up a lot of space when we um, have to store them. And then in this area we have pumpkins, um, some cow peas in the middle that are sprouting and we have some more summer squash that's zucchini, patty pan, and yellow squash. We have this in a tunnel form to keep the chickens and ducks out of, out of the bed. Once the pumpkin plants expand more, I'm hopeful that they'll be able to coexist with the chickens and the ducks without them tearing, without the ducks and chickens tearing them all up. So let me take you to um, our side yard. We have some, some things growing, including corn. And that corn patch that we just saw, that is the super sweet corn. That's a hybrid corn. That's the type of corn you find at the market. Some of these corns are heirloom varieties. And those, these are the uh, corn, these types of corns have different textures. Uh, some corn that we grow, they're, they're not sweet, like the popcorn. And, and some that are not sweet, we grow as meal corn. So we can make tortillas or use them to make hominy. And with most of the corn, we can also feed it to our ducks and chickens. Here's another uh, patch of corn. This is the same. This is the Vision XBR corn, I believe. It's Vision something. Uh, we have over there another pumpkin. This is the Luxury. I think it's Winter Luxury. This is a new to us variety. It's a small pipe type pumpkin. So we have a couple of plants growing and a bunch of volunteer uh, peas. If you're wondering about these Christmas trees, this is also a way to protect the beds from being dug out. Uh, and then we have our various citrus trees here. There is a video on comparing the different blood oranges that was recently uploaded. So you don't have to go too far back and you can find it in the crazy about citrus uh, series. So we have some citruses here. 
And before I forget, this back row here, we have the Poblano peppers. When they dry, they become ancho chili. And this, this area is newer. Um, we have some Poblanos. And then in the back, we have another uh, type of pepper. That is the bell pepper. It's the same variety as this one. And this is the Yulo Wonder bell pepper. We can see some forming. I don't know if you can see that. That one's forming. The Yulo Wonder is a proven variety of bell peppers for the Southern California area. I've tried growing the California Wonder for for the many for many years and never got it to grow for me. I'm sure other growers in the area have had success with that. Uh, we have some herbs up here as well. Um, oregano. We got this is za'atar. We have marjoram. There is a celery plant right there. Um, and then various sages that are growing in the back over here as well. This is a uh, gynara. It's also known as a, a diabetes plant. So they're good for regulating diabetes. And we have this plant because I was at one point um, interested in benicidal plants. So we have that here, a sabote that we're waiting for fruit on and more citrus trees. Um, here is a mulberry plant and it makes these uh, small mulberries. Let me see if I can find one for you. Here's here's one. It's not full full size yet, but it'll swell up. And uh, I found that we can grow a mulberry horizontally against the fence, which is great because mulberry trees can grow tall and shade everything out. So with with that mulberry, uh, we have a Pakistan mulberry here. This is grown from a cutting, and uh, the plan is to have it grow along this fence. So let's go out in the front where we have more things growing. This is this is where we have a good amount of our our crops growing. In this uh, elevated bed here, we have a couple of my favorite type of watermelon growing. This is the Klondike Stripe Blue Ribbon Watermelon. And uh, right now it's looking good because the leaves are, are bigger than the size of my hand. That's a good indicator. So we got a couple plants there. We got some uh, uh, marigold that's there. In addition to succession planting, uh, the other thing that I want to make note is that in Southern California, our climate is very arid and the sun is very intense during the warm months. So you'll, you'll notice that you probably can't see this, the soil. And that's by design. We want to plant very densely. Uh, the dense planting will, will act as a living mulch for the soil. And then plants transpire. That's uh, their way of sweating. When they transpire, the water evaporates and it creates a cooling effect. So this buffers against our notorious heat waves where um, most people have issues during those days. Our plants can get over them. And you'll see some, some plants that you might not otherwise see growing during this time of the year, like the brassicas. So let's go over there. Uh, these are some brassicas. These are the leafy type. You have uh, some Tokyo Beccana here. We got some rapini, um, some bok choy. So they're, they're all there and that is a dense sowing from seeds that we collected. One thing about growing and saving your own seeds is you have so much that you just throw out and you don't have to worry about um, coming in thinning, thinning them out or if they're, they're, you didn't sow enough. So that's what we have. Here is another succession planting of the potatoes. So let me take you back this way where we have more potatoes. So, so we grow for enough, like I said, uh, when we do succession planting for the meal. So we don't, we're not growing uh, fields of potatoes, but rather a handful or two at a time. So here's, this is the russet potato. Um, earlier we saw the magic molly, and then the ones that you saw in the grow back here, that is a fingerling potato. And so when we harvest our potato, we save one or two and let, let that chit. So that's how we get our succession uh, potatoes to be planted. Over here we have Martino's Roma tomato. This is a bush type tomato that is a paste tomato. So this is a new to me variety and we have them planted in my hypothesis from just looking at them visually since they're smaller. My hypothesis is that they will produce uh, tomatoes for us much earlier than the traditional Romas because the smaller ones tend to ripen faster. So that's our, our working hypothesis. In here is uh, Brassicas, it's the, truthfully the tomato plants grew faster than I anticipated. So they, 
they've covered more of the brassicas than I would like. And, uh, but I'm just hopeful that that'll be okay. So we have some, some cauliflower here. This, this is the uh, loose type, so it'll continue to swell and it will make a loose type of uh, cauliflower. This is the Fiorello 70. We got a Tyson that's next to it. And then in the back is an experiment to see if we can get a cauliflower. That's the Snowball X cauliflower. So we'll, we'll check on that. Here is another uh, corn variety. This is, these, this is a hybrid variety. This is called Early Sun Glow. And this is a variety that we can sow early in the year. We can sow this as early as mid-February. They don't get very tall. They stay to about four feet tall. And they make these heirloom type of sweet corn. So that's the chewy type. One thing about the heirloom type of sweet corn is that there's a very small harvest window. If you leave it on the plant too long, the sugars turn into starch and they're not good for uh, fresh eating. You'll have to use them as meal or you can use them to feed your uh, animals. So that's what we have. And then underneath, this, these are pinto bean plants. We got some garlic chive. Uh, these are gylon. This is in the cut and come again method uh, mode now. So we, we cut the main stem off and now there's uh, sprouts coming out of the nodes and then we harvest them. At some point, the, the rate that this plant will produce will diminish and we'll re we will replace it with new plants. Uh, this is a volunteer Cosmo. Uh, I like Cosmos because they're great mulch plants. They're great shade plants. So we plant them early with the tomatoes and by the time they grow in, which is around now, summertime, and it gets hot, they will act as a nice shade for our plants. Uh, this big guy over here is a new Brunswick cabbage. This is a new to us variety. So we have this new Brunswick uh, cabbage and I hope to make a garden to table uh, dish for you. Um, we're gonna make Chinese or Cantonese borscht and we'll use all the ingredients from our garden. We have uh, this cabbage, we have tomatoes, we have uh, onions, we have potatoes, we have celery, um, and the like. Uh, we're not going to go down that way because we may go down that way depending on time. Uh, here is a, another type of corn. This is the Japonica striped maize. And this one I like growing for the variegated leaves. It makes a, a corn that is not sweet and we can use the corn for cooking, but most often we use it to feed our ducks with. with. So that's what we have. And then we have a Violet de Bordeaux fig there. And then over here we have asters, millet. I love growing millet, especially the purple ones. I forget what, uh, these are purple majesties. And they add contrast to our, our garden. And we get uh, millet for our pets as well. Here is an epizote plant. Uh, this one is in f full sun and the leaves are nice. The one, if you saw the other tour, we had it in semi shade and it bolts during that, in those conditions. Um, so that's what we have over here and most plants over here are, are ornamental. We sneak in some edibles here and there, uh, pineapple sage, and we have some eggplants here. This is the frog egg, eggplant. Uh, we have some other herbs like the rosemary. Um, we also have uh, some, what are they called, artichokes that are in bloom. But forgive me, I was just messing around by sticking flowers inside on, on them. We have another row of the Japonica striped maize corn here. So we're not, for these guys, we're not, um, we're not going after the corn, but after the leaves. So we can plant them in the native soil and not worry about them being stunted because that's what they are right now. They're stunted. Um, and in, in the porch area, this is where we also grow some of our things. Here's some, some sage. This is a variegated sage, uh, rosemary. So here we grow some things in the summertime and we have some ox heart tomatoes. Uh, one nice thing about this is when the summer uh, temperatures hit, the plants here will fill out this area and create shade for our house. So it, it acts as a nice buffer between the summer heat and our house, it keeps our house a little bit cooler. And so we have um, other things like peppers growing. So this is a this is in the stage of waiting for plants to grow in. And once it grows in, it, it fills out more and it looks a little bit nicer. 
than it is right now um, especially we have some bare dirt right here um, so we're going to look for some lettuce to grow right there kind of like how these volunteer lettuce have grown in and to cover that up so um, the other thing you'll see is a lot of mulch so this is um cereal rye that we grew and uh, the mulch is good for protecting the soil and then it becomes nutrient because for our soil because we're, we're growing the mulch in our clay our, our cereal rye in our clay and we we're harvesting the energy from the sun and it becomes potential energy and we'll look at the cereal rye in a second because I'm gonna forget to show you this other uh, sprouting broccoli over here this is another Fiorello uh, 70 broccoli so it's got a good size right now which means it's got the potential to grow into a nice big crown of loose cauliflower for us um, there are other things growing here that I almost forgot to show you this is last year's uh, rooster spur chili this is the the chai chili that supposedly um, authentic sriracha is made from the the type that that is made um, the sriracha is made from jalapeno peppers because that's what's available um, to the maker so they use jalapenos let's come down here here's a more mature purple majesty millet that you can see better uh, tucked in here is a lemon drop pepper this is a really nice uh, pepper for for making an authentic Peruvian ceviche ceviche dish and then uh, speaking of uh, Peruvian ceviche um, they use red onions in there so we have some red onions over there as well they're, they're tucked in there and then in here is it's hard to see but there is a broccoli plant in here we already harvested the main crown and we're waiting we're just getting side shoots so we just go in there and get some here's another broccoli this is a eastern magic broccoli and um, it's growing in here behind behind our cereal rye so this is also known as winter rye and we grow it for mulch material it's also a great barrier to our garden we have a lot of seeds that we'll collect and replant with um, we also have bearded iris this is planted here as a, a, a edging so that we don't have erosion uh, you can use uh, plastic guards but we're planting that and we have some African blue basil that's right here and right now I'm shaping it into more of a kidney shape so that we have a fire thorn bush I'm trying to shape it into some very asymmetric shape as well um, and then here is the front growing area one, one of the themes out here is a closed loop so everything we try to, to use whatever we have on hand and materials that we have on our property so you'll see a lot of that you'll see us use plants as edging for borders to keep erosion out or to to stay uh, slow down erosion we also use other plants as mulch so this this is a mulch pile of uh, chard I found that chard is a great green manure mulch material they can grow in poor soils like clay so during the rainy months they grow out here this about I would say two to four foot section between the sidewalk and our property we don't irrigate uh, we irrigate everything from over there so over here this is more uh, more natural and the idea is that when we irrigate here someone's gonna leach over and then these plants can use them if we irrigate here we're gonna lose everything we're gonna lose the water over there so we don't irrigate so we plan accordingly and plant accordingly uh, so the charred plant has has started to decline because we don't irrigate it and it started to get powdery mildew uh, in most cases in most practices you're supposed to get rid of the the leaves uh, but for us powdery mildew is a breakdown process and so we just left it all these leaves intact and we're using it as mulch so it's being mulched this area is being mulched to preserve the the moisture uh, we have some okra that we direct sowed so once again when you say seed save you have a lot of seeds you can direct sow and get your plants through attrition uh, at some point um, they'll survive the bugs that are eating them and we can then start thinning them out so uh, we'll wait until they're about maybe two or three more maybe around five inches before we, we start thinning um, another thing that we have that we grow with mainly uh, rainwater 
or, or artichokes. So you'll see a lot of them. These artichoke plants act as a nice hedge uh, during the winter time. So it, it, it delineates our growing area and also it provides us with artichokes. And you may notice that there are a lot of artichokes this year or the flowers. And that's because I didn't get around to eating them uh, all. So then we have artichoke flowers to, to look at. Uh, so here's a, a charred plant. Here's an illustration of it. It's a really great green manure type of plant. And they're great for feeding to our pets as well. We have chickens, ducks, um, and rabbits. The tortoises don't like it too much. This is a uh, dazzling blue kale. This is a new to me variety. I like plants that have blue and purples. And so when I saw this seed available, I was very drawn to it. So that's why we have some out here. And then this one is a daylily. This is uh, the wild type. So daylilies have been hybridized. This is the wild uh, variety. And in Chinese cultures, these buds here, you, you would pick these off and you dry them and then you eat, uh, use them in cooking. The most common dish is hot and sour soup. So you'll see that sometimes they go so far as to tie them into a knot. Um, so if you, if you find that in your hot and sour soup, you've got a fancy bowl. Here are some corn. More corn. This is the this is a new to us variety. This is a it's called a purple pozole. So it's a it's a giant corn that's about the size of my 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 thumb here. Not my thumb, but my thumb uh, nail. And uh, these are great for making hominy. So we're gonna see how that grows. Here's some comfrey. Uh, this is a very um, typical permaculture plant. In dry Southern California, um, they're not as prolific and not as as uh, impactful as the chard because this is the, the comfrey is a great water um, sucking plant it absorbs water and it turns into leaves here we don't have that much so we don't have that much to harvest to use as green manure we've got another dazzling blue uh, the the remnants of faba beans i personally don't like the taste of faba beans but i enjoy growing them for uh, green manure so once again we plant them in some native clay and we harvest the leaves for green manure uh, this this little patch here we have some strawberry plants this is a european variety this is the mein schindler strawberry uh, this is a german developed strawberry from many years ago and it has a different type of taste and texture um, and it's also sterile so we don't see any strawberry plants we need to put another variety nearby so that the bees and the insects can pollinate it but I just want to highlight that variety. We got some fenugreek that's here and a raspberry plant. This raspberry plant needs, I found that they need um, full sunlight. So here there's not full sunlight and it doesn't get productive. So we'll have to look to move it somewhere. Um, another plant that's great for planting and getting mulch out. I don't know if you caught that truck going by, so I'll repeat myself. Another plant that's great for uh, harvesting as mulch is the purple fountain grass. Um, some people have said that it's invasive and I, I, I haven't found that to be the case. Uh, the other thing is that we live in an urban area where it's not going to spread into a wild area. It's, that area is so far away. It it's uh, has a very low chance. So the risk is worth the reward. If, and that's, if the people that are um, critical of this plant is, is probably being a little bit too um, risk adverse in my opinion. Uh, here is some more of the cereal rye, and we have more epizote. We got some peppers here. Uh, these are the poblanos. We got a shishito. These are overwintered plants. And then this one is an asperbrock. Asperbrock is the Gylon broccoli hybrid. Um, the commercial trademark name is broccolini. So if you're familiar with broccolini, this is what it is. It's one of my favorite types of vegetables. Um, and it's very productive, so we grow this year round. This plant looks like it's uh, at its end of its productivity now, so we'll have to, we have plants to replace it. We always have succession plants. Here are some more uh, peppers. These are the ahi biquinho. Let me get closer so you can see the spelling. Um, it makes these small peppers that are fruity, and they're great for pickling, and I found that if I dry them, uh, and mix them with uh, togarashi, we can make a nice togarashi powder from them. Uh, Burpee sent us 
their variety called spinning tops and it sounds like this they have a pepper variety called spinning tops and it sounds like it's this variety and you can see that i like it so much that we have one two three four five plants um, other types of uh, peppers we don't need five plants worth but with the uh, little tiny ones you can use them in pickles and powder and we need five plants worth um, here is another plant that burpee sent us as the trial sample plant for 2022 this is the dark star we have it planted here and then we recently constructed this trellis and the hope is that we'll train the tomato plant onto the trellis and this is made with uh, material from our yard and trimmings so we have them uh, this is just basically cross braced and leaning on one another and then we drilled a, a hole so we can stick a, a twig in here to act as a peg and everything is holding up uh, the opposing forces are holding the other sticks up um, more succession plants so we have more brassicas these are going to be broccolis and the um, broccoli gylon hybrid so we have uh, in here let's see I can see a tag here so this is Monty this is a nice summer uh, broccoli for us Monty um, what's nice about Monty is that it produces a small crown but then it produces a lot of side shoots and when you pick those side shoots and you put them together you get a good amount of uh, broccoli so it's like getting a broccoli that's already been uh, processed for you uh, this one over here I don't see the tag they all look very similar it might be happy rich and this one might be uh, asper brock so that's what we have and then um, here we have some seeds that we sowed the other day for mustard some of them are popping up let's go over there where we're going to look at some more oh before we do here's another ingredient for our borscht some carrots so we have we have carrots um, growing and we grow them on the edge of our growing space because we can better control our water so when we irrigate the middle portion uh, we know that's going to get a lot of water with carrots we don't want them to have water we want them to chase the water that's down below so we make sure that we're uh, not irrigating where the carrots are growing we'll irrigate up to the edge and then every now and then we'll come in uh, this is clay so maybe once a month at most um, and water it that way you get nice long straight carrots so here we have we have a loose cauliflower that's further along and this is the Fiorello 70 and you may notice that what this cruddy color is it's, it's actually a red leaf lettuce that I picked off the ground and uh, threw it on top this is so that the we can keep the crown blanched it when direct sunlight hits it, it it changes the flavor it gives it a more nutty flavor and with the loose cauliflower they they have a pretty strong nutty flavor to begin with um, and also uh, it, it discolors it a little bit so in terms of markability it, it doesn't look as nice and so in the commercial areas they will take the leaves and they will tie them together I found that just draping something on top of it is a lot more quick to do and that's what we have um, here is another uh, brassica this is the sprouting broccoli type so I guess we'll just for the just to make uh, things quicker to say we'll call the Gylon broccoli hybrid and we'll call them sprouting broccoli so that's what we have uh, here is a lemon tree this variety is called a Genoa lemon and this is something that um, we got because I'm after authentic ingredients and it, from research this is the closest uh, lemon I can find to the lemon they use in Peruvian ceviche so the Genoa lemon is one of the lemons that they they use so that's what we have and um, we're not when we do use this lemon for the ceviche we're not we're not gonna harvest or pick the yellow ripe one we're actually gonna pick the green one so that's what we have um, I need to do a crazy about citrus a video just on this variety and that's a to do list so um, I'll t talk more about this variety in the future um, flowers I enjoy growing flowers and especially um, orange flowers that have some uh, gradient in them so here is is such flower this is a David Austin rose this is the lady of shallot rose so we have that growing out here and uh, always something packed in somewhere got some parsley here 
here's another look at the um, red onions and the variety is uh, Cabernet this is a hybrid variety so those are the red hybrid onions pardon the odd jump on the screen here the video camera stops videos after half an hour so uh, we reached that point and it stopped it uh, so we'll continue on here we have some more pepper plants these are paprika and the variety is Magyar we have a good number of plants because we're we're hoping to make our own paprika powder so that's uh, what we have over here the other day uh, right in front of the uh, okra that we saw earlier uh, we sowed some glass gem corn so we're hoping to see some glass gem corn from that sowing and this is another small growing area we have some volunteer cilantro more of the faba beans that plants that we'll collect as green manure and mulch some wildflowers that include scabiosas and um, bachelor's buttons although the bachelor buttons have uh, have grown and uh, produced for the year already one of the things that w when looking at our garden tour is that you may notice that we grow a lot of our plants in the ground and our plants where we have in containers they're filled with soil that has been amended and it's predominantly clay soil clay soil is a really good foundation for growing plants and it's something that takes time to develop um, as I mentioned in the garden uh, tour the first uh, garden tour soil becomes good at about three years and at that time you can grow more of the heavy uh, nutrient dependent crops like sweet corn and watermelon and, the, and such so in the first year you may need to use more fertilizer amendments um, second year might be less and then in the third year it will be really robust and you uh, can help your soil by continually to feed it organic matter uh, anything that can break down um, wood wood particles that are smaller uh, mulch and 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 of course compost so those are those are good things to feed the soil with um, before we uh, end the video um, we're going to show you in case you missed that that tour of our what I like to call our 150 square foot garden although it's gotten a little bit bigger now uh, in here just wanted to give you another illustration of succession planting uh, where we have some gylon that we harvested the, the other day uh, we're now letting the nodes down here grow into new uh, portions of the plant where we can harvest and in the meantime we have uh, succession plants coming in so we have some more gylon I usually plant about six at a time because that's about how much we can eat per cooking uh, session of this green. So there's six here. And then we have some over here that are further along. So we have some more gylon. And even with uh, tomatoes, we're, we're in a very long growing season. And we have some Roma tomatoes that we have as succession plants. And then uh, in a week or two, we're going to be planting another round of tomato plants for fall and these are the tomato plants that we planted uh, these are the varieties that we planted last December because these are varieties that can produce early and they can produce late like the Costa Luto Genovese tomato so the sun's coming out now it's harder to see but we have an amazing uh, crop this year it makes up for last year's lackluster crop last year was the first year we grew it and uh, we had a lackluster harvest there they weren't as big and as prolific as what we have today so that's um, pretty much a, our tour today and a good representation of how we grow here in Southern California this is a way for us to achieve food autonomy we can have variety of fresh food and also have enough to uh, have a sustainable amount for our family which is uh, the four of us we got two two kids they are eight and five and so we have uh, right now dialed in the amount of plants that we need to grow and uh, dialed in the process of not only the process but, but the discipline you just have to build on that so we just kind of be uh, mindful about making sure to plant succession plants to keep everything going so that's going to be it with our tour today thanks for coming out this is a very in-depth tour there was a lot of show and uh, i hope i kept some of the details brief 
and it was enjoyable and hope to see you in future uh, videos and garden updates and uh, other topics. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.